Good evening and salutations, my GH fans. So, Laura Smith is talking to Curtis, and you know they bring up Florence Gray, and that's when that's when Laura's like her biological dad um, mar was married to um, Florence Gray. And so that's the connection. But other than that, she doesn't know anything about um, Florence. Now, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> I had to sit there and wonder doing this video twice. Because I um, I got kind of bored halfway through. And I was watching um, the scenes with Laura and Curtis. So... <laughs> I had to sit there and rewatch it again. I was like, wow, did I just like sleep through this whole episode? I know I didn't, but I felt like I slept through um, parts of it. Um, other than that, you know, nothing really happened between the characters. They just want to sit there and find out more about this Florence Grace. So that way they can use her against Cyrus somehow. Um, another part that was, I'm not going to lie, that was kind of boring was the stuff with Portia and Jordan. Now before I get into the stuff with Portia, Portia and Jordan, because to be honest, nothing really happened, um, I feel like, and this is just a theory, I feel like the actress that's playing Jordan is probably going to be the next person to go. Here's the thing, here's how I look at it. I was never really fond of the actress that played Lilla. And she was on there for a while. So I don't know if she was just doing an amazing job and I just couldn't see it for whatever uh, reason. A bunch of people really liked her. Or that was the only person that they can get at the time to play Lula. What I don't understand, and, and, and maybe this is the reason why they decide to have the character go away. Really think about who they're going to get to play the next Lulu. Really make sure that she's solid before they just you know, throwing another character. Because they could have just did that. They could have just, you know, next day, the new character that's playing Lulu is played by yada yada yada. So, I feel like Jordan is the next person to go. Um, let's be honest. I know a lot of people didn't like Jordan as a character, but this woman, bless this woman's heart, It is not is not up the par, I guess, if you want to say, compared to the last woman that played Jordan. I don't find her whenever she tries to do dramatic scenes when she's yelling or pointing a gun at someone. I'm just like I can't take you seriously as an authoritarian figure. I just can't. So I feel like she may be the next person to go. Just a theory. Um, but yeah, the scenes with her and Portia was pointless. You know, Jordan kicked herself for not being there. Portia reminded Jordan of, hey, listen, you know, Cyrus still got you on a short leash. And if you were the, if you were here, you wouldn't be able to do anything. And even if you would have tried, well, he just would have targeted TJ again. And you would have been right back where you started at. Other than that, yeah, nothing really major happened between those two. And, yeah, it was, their scenes were kind of pointless. Um, Taggart and Carly. Here's the thing about, I know that a lot of people don't like Carly. And so when this clip comes on tonight, because I know they usually do these GH clips about characters or whatever. And the clip between, the clip between Carly and Taggart comes up. There's going to be a bunch of people that's going to be slamming Tag on um, Carly. Here's the thing. They start arguing. And Tiger is just getting frustrated that nothing's being done. And he's like, yo, you didn't even actually have a bodyguard with Trina when she goes to school or whatever. And, you know, Carly was like, she didn't want a bodyguard. She wants to live a normal life. She figured it's going to help her. And, you know, Portia agreed. So that's what we went with. But he feels like there's nothing being done fast enough. And Carly's like, yo, listen. You know, he's working on it. Chill out. And then, you know, Car and then Taggart starts getting an attitude. And Carly says some straight. Carly's like, listen, between our family and our bad blood, you're lucky that we're actually doing anything for you. We're not doing this for you. We're doing this for Trina. 
And, um, you know, she, she really, like, set him straight. Um, you know, because, listen, I get it. Tagger is lashing out because he doesn't know what to do. He's not used to being helpless. And, you know, at the time, Carly seemed like an easy target. Except for she's Carly, and she's not an easy target. And Tagger learned that the hard way, because, well, she set him straight. Let's put it that way. Um... And so, yeah, that pretty much ended that scene. Um, and I'm not going to lie, I was really on Carly's side. I really was. Between all the bad blood and everything like that that Taggart was Smith there doing to their family, the fact that they're risking their life and their neck to sit there and help out their family, like, Taggart's family is like... And, and also, you know, Carly was like, yo, you put this whole thing in motion when you and Jordan decided to frame Cyrus. All this is your fault. And I'm like, yeah, kind of is, to an extent. I mean, let's be honest. Somebody's always going to sit there and come at Sonny. Um, and it was only a matter of time, even if they didn't put him behind bars. It was only a matter of time before, you know, Sonny came up on Cyrus's radar. So I don't know exactly how much of it is actually um, Tiger's fault, but whatever. Um, what else? So, while Martin is at, you know, his office or whatever, Julian tries to sneak up behind him, and of course he gets pepper sprayed. You know, it's amazing. This guy, Julian, must be, like, I don't know, damn near invincible. I'm pretty sure he got shot by Olivia, and yet he was still just walking around and just whatever, like, just man is still pretty much. He fell from that balcony, and he looked like he was just sleeping. I'm sitting there thinking, so you must have broke some, like, legs or toe or paper cut or something. This guy is just walking around, get ready to sit there and try to sneak up on Gray. I'm like, okay. So, long story short, Julian's like, you're going to get me out of town. And he takes the photo of him and somebody, he was like, I'm going to sit there and show this to Sonny or some people and, you know, I want the money out the safe and I want your car keys and, um, yeah. And then, you know, Martin Gray tries to be like, hey, listen, I got this letter from, you know, from Nell saying that you're involved in all this stuff with, you know, Sonny's grandkid. And Julie reminds him, hey, listen, the fact that you knew about this letter, yeah, you might not want to start bragging about it. So, long story short, he pretty much blackmailed um, Martin Gray into getting out of town. So, yeah, that happened. Um, what else happened? We got, um, we got Nicholas and Ava. Uh, I'm not going to lie. It was another scene, so I was just like, I was kind of bored by it. I'm going to be honest, you know. I mean... Ava was all like, I love you, and yada, 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 and it's real, and I was like, okay, that's cool, that's nice, I guess, yay. But nothing really happened, you know? It was just like a lovey-dovey scene that was just like, I'm not gonna lie, it almost made me sick. Um, listen, I'm all up for happiness and everything like that, and I think that's great, but I'm also just like really bored by it. So, long story short... You know, Nicholas was like, well, was, you know, I think he asked about Julian as far as getting him out of town. And then that's when Ava started getting all, like, sharp and everything. Like, oh, well, I got rid of him. I took care of him or whatever. And I guess we're going to find in the next scene, or maybe in this scene, that she was like, she, she got rid of Julian. I don't know if she said she killed Julian, but that was pretty much the impression that Nicholas kind of got out of it. So I guess we'll just wait and see. Now, um, Trina was sitting in a cafe by herself. Some stranger who was acting like a weirdo was like, oh, I know about your dad or whatever. You know, like, I know about your dad, um, and I can get you answers. And she was pretty much like, yo, I'm going to call the cops if you don't get away from me. Um, but she calmed down after, you know, the guy was like, I, I have answers for you. I, I know someone who has answers for you. And Cyrus comes off. So, she's being all super defensive and yelling and everything like that and just 
whatever. Which I understand because the dude was coming after her dad. So I can't blame her for her attitude towards Cyrus. But after a while, I'm not going to lie. I was like, Ugh, your attitude is getting kind of annoying. Even though it's in the right place. Even though I totally 100% agree with what you're saying. It got kind of annoying after a while. But, um, you know, Cyrus was able to calm her down. It was like, your dad's still alive. I don't know where he's at, but, you know, yada, 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 yada. Um, I, and by yada, 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 I mean, like, he was trying to be all good guy and noble and everything like that. I was like, yeah, okay, Cyrus, sure. Uh, I guess we'll go with that. Whatever. Um, and Trina wasn't having it. Trina was like, I don't believe you, yada, yada, yada. And she pretty much practically curses him out and tell him to get the hell away from her. And so Cyrus is like, alright, fine, cool. He walks off, and he's on the phone with somebody. And pretty much what he's doing is he's using Trina to find Taggart. So he can kill him. For real this time. Um, and I'm not going to lie, I did kind of laugh a little bit. Um, you know, Cyrus is, is a villain, okay? He took out a bunch of people that didn't have anything to do with Jason. You know, this guy doesn't have a moral code. He doesn't seem like he really have morals at all. Um, and I guess that's what you can expect from a villain. So it's like, I can't really... I can't full Like, I like the fact that he's a villain, that he just doesn't care about anybody, like, collateral damage be damned. But I can't sit there and fully be like, you know... Yay, Cyrus, you know. But at least he's a villain that seems like he's going to stick around because he, again, he doesn't care about collateral damage. He doesn't have a moral code like Sonny does. Like, Sonny wouldn't do something like that. Sonny wouldn't do something like that. Alcazar, Alcazar would do something like that. And I really like Alcazar, but he would do something like that. So, whatever on that. Um, what else happened? And the last scenes that I'll talk about is Sonny and Jason. So, before Cyrus went to go visit Trina, he went to talk to Sonny and Jason. And he pretty much threw Julian under the bus. And was like, Julian's your guy, go after him. Um, and then he walked off and he left. And Sonny and Jason are sitting there talking about the best way to sit there and deal with Cyrus. And they realized that you know, Cyrus left enough room between Julian and him. This way, you know, they can take care of Julian for him. Cyrus is actually pretty smart. The guy, again, has no moral code whatsoever, but he's pretty, he is smart. Instead of killing Julian himself, he's going to get Sonny to do it for him. And so, you know, Jason and Sonny are, I mean, Jason and Sonny are sitting there trying to come up with the best ways to sit there and take out Cyrus. And, um, you know, Jason's like, listen, there's a lot of people that have survived from that cliff before. So, you know, Julian may still be alive and Sonny's all like, you know, if he's alive, then I'm going to kill him and yada, yada, yada. I'm not going to lie, I don't really think they said much of anything that was important besides that. And I love Sonny and Jason, but I just felt like besides the interaction with Cyrus and throwing Julian under the bus, everything else was somewhat pointless. You know, they realized that, you know, they're like, oh, well, Ava, you know, Ava isn't that they are hiding Julian. So they're pretty much back to square one. So at that point, it was like, I'm not going to lie, I I somewhat, it's not that I fell asleep when I was not there watching Jason and Sonny, I was just like, okay, okay, I'm not even taking notes at this point because there's no point. Um, and that's, I think that's actually about it. I don't think I really missed anything that was too crucial, at least anything that I can think of. Um, everything else is just kind of fluff. I'm going to be honest with you. Um, we know that Julian is alive. And extremely healthy for somebody who fell off a damp... Okay, whatever. Who? <laughs> I just, I can't get over that. He wasn't even limping. Okay? This guy didn't even have so much as a paper cut. 
whatever. Um, I'm just wondering when is when is um, Julian's last um, scenes. Or is the actor's last scenes? I don't know. I don't know if the characters. I don't know if the character is going to be gone, or just the actor, or just the actor. Um. But yeah, other than that, I guess this was a lot of fluff. Um, nothing really significant happened, and this is the reason why I'm just like, yep. So I guess we'll find out more tomorrow, because tomorrow's Fridays, and they always call it Cliffhanger Fridays, which is weird. I'm not going to lie. I feel like sometimes cliffhangers, cliffhanger Fridays is true, but I feel like sometimes all the stuff doesn't start to go down until like Monday or Tuesday when you start cliffhanging stuff. At least that's how it was. Anyway, with that being said, that was pretty much about it. Just pretty much an average episode, I guess. Um, thank you for watching. Let me know what your thoughts are on this episode, and um, I will catch you in the next video. And by the way, um, if you could share this video, that would be really helpful, and, um, yeah.